One of the reasons Nu Metal failed was its inability to grow and mature with its audience. In fact, that's the reason that a lot of metal genres fall out of favor and go by the wayside and why the most successful bands change up their sound to keep up with their own core beliefs and values. Listening to 30 and 40 year olds talk about destroying things drinking and partying is really lame. And that's what makes Disturbs Believe is so completely underrated and powerful. Welcome to the heaviest show in the universe. My name is Kane Irvine and today we are talking about one of the most underrated albums of the early 2000s, Disturbs Boom. That's right, early new metal pioneers and champions Disturbed actually released a technically and melodically impressive album far above that of any of their new metal peers. This album isn't really even a new metal album, but yet it's never truly gotten the appreciation it deserves. Disturbed's first album was an instant success in the early 2000s, easily fitting in with the new metal explosion of the late 90s. It could be said that Disturbed rose to the very top of the heap with the release of The Sickness, immediately going on tours with bigger bands like Ministry and opening up at Ozfest. One album into their careers and they are already superstars. And they weren't even the same as these other lame ass new metal bands. Their sound was completely different. Don't get me wrong, their first release was filled with typical bounce riffs and DJ scratchy scratches, but their ability to write songs with a real melody was apparent and separated them from other generic new metal bands that were popping up at the time. So their second album was highly anticipated to say the least. And this album was immediately recognizable as so much different from the sickness. It was like a completely different band had entered into the studio to record. The album was so much more mature. I mean, you could say there were still a few quote unquote bounce riffs here and there, but there was no incessant repetitive down tune chugga chugga chugga, and thank freaking god there were no DJs present. I mean, take a listen to the difference in approach between these two sounds on their first two albums. Like, dude, that is a crazy jump in sound. It's comparable to the way Pantera sounded before and after Cowboys from Hell. And the album was released at number one on the billboards. An instant success. Well, so how is this album underrated then? Well, album sales equal popularity, and popularity does not equal quality, so that reflected in the reviews. Some critics called this album purposeless, average, and even unlistenable. No doubt these critics and metal elitists were still viewing Disturbed from a place of rap metal infused late 90s angst. But everything from the lyrics to the more lead guitar and melody driven sound was a total revamp in maturity from the sickness. And I think one of the main causes of this was the death of David Draymond's grandfather, who had distanced himself from Draymond once he chose to become a metal musician. His grandfather was on his deathbed and requested to see Draymond one last time. But by the time they were able to get a hold of David, his grandfather had already passed away. And when asked about the influence of his grandfather's death on his lyrical approach to the album, he said, No one could look at the aura I projected over the course of that time and not feel my pain, and those feelings definitely will present themselves on the record. David Draymond being raised as an orthodox Jew really influenced his lyrics about religion and romantic relationships, heartbreak, and societal control and collapse that took the place of the abused and tortured lyrics about how hard life is and how you want to kill and fighting one another that was so commonplace among the dying new metal trend. 
This provided a way deeper and more meaningful experience, easily separating them from the other new metal acts that couldn't grow up or grow their music. David even presented a higher range here than on the last album, completely changing his vocal style from the signature to a more melody-driven approach. This is largely due to a surgery he had to repair a valve in his throat that was spilling stomach acid onto his vocal cords. This surgery also dramatically increased his vocal range, resulting in the absolutely fantastic performance we see on this record. And not to mention, their work became way more lead and melody-driven, especially when compared to the quality of those melodies and leads that were on the sickness. And honestly, the melodies and leads on Believe are probably better than anything that they've released to this day. Check out some of these fantastic things that I'm talking about. Look, I'm not saying this is Animals as Leaders or Dream Theater or Opeth, but it's definitely not freaking Mushroom Head either. This is pure melodic heavy metal personified for the millennium in which it was released. And I think Disturbed always gets unfairly thrown into the typical new metal classification and all the negativity that entails that because of their first album. But on Believe, Disturbed became a way more well-rounded and mature band. And that often gets lost in the hype that surrounded their first album because of the scene and time that it came up in. But basically because because of Believe, they took a hard fork from being a new metal act into true metal legends. And I get that their last few releases have been, well, terrible, but starting with Believe, they went on a four album run that's almost unmatched in metal from the 2000s onward. This album is truly a masterpiece with fantastic composition, hooky choruses, and great rhythms and leads that will keep you coming back for more. And it perfectly showcases what makes great bands successful. And that is growing up and out of trends that propelled you originally to success and becoming more mature while still staying true to what you value and of course, what you believe. I sincerely hope that I have convinced you to give this album at least another try or a listen for the very first time. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week on the heaviest show in the universe. And of course, until then, and always, long live metal.